This presentation is on breeds and shapes in NetLogo. Creating breeds and giving them different shapes is a fun and interesting thing to do in NetLogo. There are four predetermined types of agents in NetLogo. Turtles, patches, links, and observer. Generally, we've been dealing with turtles and patches. And in this presentation, we're going to be dealing solely with turtles because breeds are a type of turtle. NetLogo predefines only one type of turtle that arrowhead shaped turtle that you've been used to using so far. But NetLogo allows the programmer, you, to define different breeds of turtles and give them different shapes. There's one important thing you have to remember about breeds in NetLogo, that breeds are just a type of turtle. So any breed you create has all the properties that a turtle has in addition to those properties that you give that breed. Breeds are a subset of turtles. And when you refer to turtles in general in the program, it's going to refer to all the breeds. So if you were to change the color of all your turtles, then you would change the color of all the breeds. Or if you were going to count all your turtles, it would count all the breeds up and give you a total number of turtles. There are many reasons to use breeds in that logo. Sometimes you want agents that have different attributes, different sizes or shapes, genders or species. Sometimes you want agents that behave differently, so you'd like to be able to ask each breed to do something differently. Sometimes you just want to refer to each breed separately. Say, for instance, you want to count all the dogs in your model. And sometimes you want agents to have different types of variables. And sometimes it's just fun to have different breeds in your model. So the first thing you have to do if you want to have breeds in your model is to define your breed. This is sort of like declaring your variable. You define your breed by using the breed keyword at the top of the program before any procedures. And here's how it would look in general. Breed, then the plural name of the breed, and then the singular name of the breed. Here are some examples. Breed wolves wolf, and breed sheep a sheep. Now, if you have a word like sheep, where the singular and the plural are the same word, you still have to make the plural and the singular names you give it in the model different. Like we did here with sheep and a sheep. Sheep is the plural name of the breed, and a sheep is the singular name of the breed. Once you define your breed, then you can create the breeds in your setup procedure. And you do that the same way you did turtles, except you create breeds and you can create breeds and just give a number, or you can create breeds and give commands afterwards. You can distribute them randomly, or you can set their color, just as you could do with turtles. Here's an example. We have two breeds here, wolves and sheep. And in our setup command, we clear the world and create 50 wolves, which are black, and 50 sheep, which are white. Now in this case, because we haven't set a shape, the wolves and the sheep would be the same shape, the default shape for turtles, which is the arrowhead shape. You can set attributes for turtles, and you can set attributes for breeds using the same set command. So you would ask an individual agent of a breed using ask breed singular, and then set that attribute followed by whatever information that attribute needs. So in the example we have here, we're asking wolf 3 to set its size to be 5. We can ask all the agents of a specific breed to change their attribute by using the ask breeds command and then setting the attribute in brackets. In our example, we are asking all the wolves to set their size to be five. Here's a list of all the attributes you can set for either turtles or breeds. Many of them you've already used, but many of them you might like to explore further. One of the most enjoyable things you can do when you create breeds is to set their shape to be different from one another. Now you can set the default shape of a turtle and you can set the default shape of your individual breed using the set default shape command. And once you use that command, it sets the shape of the breeds or the rest of the program. So below is an example in part of a setup procedure where you're using both turtles and cows. We have set the set default shape turtles to circle and set default shape cows to cow. Then when we create a turtle, we'll get a turtle of the shape that is a circle and when we create cows, we'll get the shape cow. You can also use the set shape command inside the ask breed command. So in our example, we're asking wolf 10 below to set its shape to be a sheep. So how do you find shapes in that logo? You go to the top of the program to the tools tab and you select the turtle shape editor. 
You can use the Turtle Shape Editor to look at the shapes that are available and pick one. There are over 30 shapes to choose from. Or you can import a shape from the Turtle's library. There are over 200 shapes to choose from in the library. You can even edit an existing shape, but make sure you rename it. You can also create a new shape from scratch. Once you pick, import, edit, or create a shape, you must carefully note down the name because you'll need it when you're writing your program. Here are the shapes available as a default in your NetLogo program. Let's go take a look at some of the other shapes. Here we are in NetLogo again. So to find the shapes, we go to the Tools toolbar and select Turtle Shapes Editor. And here are the default shapes that are available in the Turtle Shapes Editor. The default for all turtles is, of course, this arrowhead, but there are many that we can choose from in the default menu. We can also import from the larger NetLogo Shapes library, and this has hundreds of shapes that we can choose from. Let's do that. Let's import a rabbit. So now in the default library for my program, I now have rabbit. And let's import, oh, I don't know. How about a monster? OK, now there's the monster that I imported. I also mentioned that we can edit an existing shape. So say we have this square here. And we wanted to edit it. We click the Edit button and we get the edit window. Now, in the edit window, one thing you notice right off are the flashing colors. That's because this gray box here that I've chosen actually can change in the program, and that's what that's indicating. Now, I can edit this by choosing these various edit buttons. The solid ones mean that the shapes will be filled, and the empty ones mean that the shape will be not filled. Let's just make a red box inside this existing square here. There we go. And I can rename this square too and hit OK. Oh, no, I can't. It says it already exists, so no, I don't want to replace something that already exists. Let me rename it square 3. Let's see if that one exists. No. So I've created a new square in here. You could also create a whole new shape by clicking on New and getting a blank shape editing window. So in this editing window, we can use these shape tools here. The ones that are black means the shape will be filled, and the ones that are white will, means the shape will be empty, just a line that draws the shape. The color that changes means that if we select this color, say gray, up here, then the color will be able to be changed in the NetLogo program. If we select a different color, say red, then the color will stay red in the NetLogo program. Let's give it a try. I'm going to make my own circle. Okay, so you can see that since I selected the color gray, that the circle is changing colors. That's what this, these boxes down here indicate. If I click on some other portion besides the circle and change the color to red and draw a new shape, Let's make it filled. Then that shape will stay red no matter what the color of the turtle is. Let's draw a few more shapes. OK, so now I would have to save this with a new name. I'll make it my, my circle. OK, and there it is, Maureen's circle. So now I could call it if I wanted to. Let's go try that. OK, here we are. Let's go look at the code. I created a little program with a setup procedure in it, but first I created the three breeds that I'm going to be using, rabbits, sheep, and monsters. And I used the breed keyword and the plural and singular of the breed names that I wanted. Then in my setup procedure, I cleared the world and I set the default shape for rabbits to be rabbit, for sheep to be sheep, and monsters to be a monster. Remembering that that's the, the name of the shape in the NetLogo library. I created 20 rabbits, colored them red, scattered them across the plane, and set their size to 3. I created 30 sheep that are white, scattered across the plane, and set their size to be 3. I created 10 mo monsters that are rather larger and scattered them. And I created 10 turtles, and I'm going to set their shape to be Maureen's circle, which is the shape I created. And I scattered them across the plane and set the size to be 3. 
Now, when you set the default shape up here, that means anytime you create turtles in your program, it will automatically use that breed, that shape. So if your breed was to have babies, then they would come out as the same shape. By setting the turtles using the set shape command inside the square brackets here, later on, if I create turtles, they will not come out as circles. They will come out as the default shape, which is the triangular arrowhead. Let's go see if it will work. All right, it's full of shapes. I have large monsters that I multicolored. I have white sheep, red rabbits, and multicolored circles. Now my, my circles have a background that changes color, but the shapes are inside the circles are the same color. And that's how you work with shapes in NetLogo. So once you specify a breed, then you can set agent variables to that breed. So each agent in that breed would have its own value for the variable. And you would do that using the breed's own command, just like we had the turtle's own command. Let's look at the examples below. Let's say we created two breeds at the top of the program, sheep and wolves, and now we're going to create variables that go with those breeds. Our first variable command is turtle's own energy. Now, in this case, both wolves and sheep would have a variable energy, and each wolf and each sheep would have its own value for that variable. If we use the command wolves own and create the variable wolf birth rate, then only wolves would have a variable named wolf birth rate, and each wolf would have its own value for that variable. Similarly, sheep own would create variables just for sheep, in this case, sheep birth rate. This statement creates the variable sheep birth rate for each sheep and gives each sheep its unique value for that variable. Also, you can have breed specific actions by asking each breed to do something. So if we use the command ask breeds followed by square brackets and inside the square brackets have a list of commands, then all of the agents in that breed would follow those commands. If we use the command ask breed number followed by commands, then only the breed with that agent number would do the commands. And if we say ask breeds with condition commands, then that means that only the agents in that breed with that condition would follow those commands. For instance, if we had multicolored rabbits and we only wanted the red rabbits to do something, then we can say ask breeds with and in square brackets color equal red and then in another square brackets, a list of commands, then only the red rabbits would follow those commands. Here's an example. Ask sheep, left random 90, right random 90, forward one. Well, that's the wiggle walk, right? We're asking the sheep to perform the wiggle walk with a right and left random degree of 90. Let's take a look at a sample program. Well, here we are in the wolf sheep predation model again. Let's go look at the code. Okay, we can see at the top here that we've created two breeds sheep and wolves, and we've given all of them the variable energy. Now we can go down further. First we set the default shape for sheep to be sheep, and then we create sheep and give them these attributes. Similarly, we've set the default shape for wolves to be wolf and created them, giving them individual attributes. Now when we go to the go procedure, we can see that we're asking sheep to do something in the square brackets, and we're asking wolves to do something else. So that's how you could use breeds inside a NetLogo program. So in summary, you can have breeds in NetLogo. And breeds are a subset of turtles. For each breed, you have to define it, and then you have to create that breed. You can set its attributes to be different than the other breeds or turtles in the program, and you can even set its shape to be different. Each breed can have specific agent variables, and you can specify agent-specific commands so you can make your agent do exactly what you want it to do. Thank you.